So let's talk about oncological emergencies. And again, if you're an adult, you should not be watching this. This is for the complex crew last semester that you will be there eventually. So there's a variety of complications. So I'm gonna break each one down. Um, so one of the first complications that you can have, and these are of course dependent on the type of cancer you have, um, but uh, there's what's called spinal cord compression. And so this is what's called, an, this is one of the types of obstructive emergencies. And effectively what happens, there's invasion of the epidural space of the spinal cord. So you can kind of see this picture where this tumor is actually pressing on the spinal cord. Um, the patient may have back pain, uh, motor or sensory deficits or bowel and bladder dysfunction. Kind of think of it, this is like a spinal injury. So think of patients that come in with um, spinal injuries, kind of what they're feeling and experiencing, and this is very similar. Um, we always start by treating the cancer with radiation, getting the tumor smaller so there's not that compression. We can do steroids. Um, and for some patients, they're going to end up need to do back surgery, like a laminectomy. Um, and then a a rigorous pain management is going to be really important for these patients to help decrease a lot of their symptoms. There's also what's called superior vena cava syndrome or SVC syndrome. Um, this is another type of obstructive emergency. And there's a blockage or obstruction of the superior, ve uh, superior vena cava by a tumor or clot. So think of the superior vena cava up here in your chest. So what happens, like you can see in this picture is that there's a blockage. So everything starts kind of backing up. And so it, you can kind of see in their symptoms, if everything's backing up here, where does it back up to? And it backs up onto my face. So I have distended head, neck, and chest chest veins. Um, my face and eyes can get edematous and I start having like a lot of swelling up in this area because all the fluids backing up there because there's a blockage down here. Um, the treatment is really focused on treating the problem. Radiation and chemotherapy is going to be the most important thing because um, I've got to um, help to, um, you know, decrease a lot of those, uh, the tumor, whatever's causing the blockage in order to restore uh, more uh, uh, sufficient blood flow to the area that's lacking blood flow. The last type of obstructive emergency is what's called third spacing syndrome. And this is shifting a fluid from a vascular space to a cellular space. So in other words, fluid goes from my blood into my cells. So I have enough fluid in my body, but it's not in the right place. Um, and so this is going to look a lot like if you remember third spacing from burns or third spacing from um, patients like in liver failure with ascites, is they look like they have low fluid volume. They have low blood pressure, increased heart rate, decreased urine output, because they're really, in a sense, dehydrated. Even though they have a ton of fluid, it's not in the right place. So I'm going to do fluid and electrolyte replacement and also give albumin, and that albumin is going to help pull in that fluid from where it's not supposed to be into where it's supposed to be. And then um, when I'm doing those treatments, I also need to make sure that they don't go to the opposite end of the spectrum and end up in fluid overload. Um, so really monitoring from both sides. There's also hypercalcemia. This is a type of metabolic emergency. Um, and it's gonna be worsened because of the fact that a lot of cancer patients are immobile and dehydrated. And it's um, you know, defined, you know, when we check the labs, their calcium level is going to be greater than 12. They're going to have EKG changes because calcium is one of the electrolytes that helps to balance um, your uh, regulation of your cardiac muscle and tissue. Um, they can have polyuria, kidney stone formation and fatigue as well. So I'm going to start by treating the cancer and you can kind of kind of see that as a theme like the way that we're going to fix all these things is really treating the cancer first and foremost, but then I also need to treat the problem so I'm going to hydrate them by giving um, extra fluids, it's going to dilute that extra calcium that's there um, by phosphate therapy because remember anytime your calcium is imbalanced if I have not enough calcium or too much, um, you know I have breakdown of my bone I'm higher risk for fractures, um, and then um, my uh, bone is also going to get weaker and so by phosphate therapy is going to help Help to um, build up some of that bone that might be breaking down. And then diuretics as well, um, which is going to help to get rid of some of that excess calcium through the kidneys. There's also SIADH, which I know y'all are familiar with back from your favorite subject endocrine. Um, so this is another type of metabolic emergency, and this is too much ADH. Remember antidiuretic hormone, you're holding on to water. So this patient has water retention, and because they're holding on to water, their sodium gets low. So the big problem, even though it's no good to hold on to water, the big problem with SIADH is that um, they have these uh, neurological compromise because of the low sodium. So I'm really worried about brain swelling. Might look for mental status changes, change in level of consciousness, confusion, things like that. So this patient has weight gain without edema. So they don't look swollen, but they're holding on to a lot of water um, and um, not urinating it because they're not, um, they're, it's not going into their fluid tissues, but it's just in their blood. 
Um, so the treatment, of course, treat the cancer. Again, start with that. Um, and if you remember, treatment for SIDH includes um, getting that sodium up. So I'm going to give some 3% saline. I may also give some furosemide to get some of that fluid out. Um, and then monitoring their sodium closely uh, to make sure that they're not going to, it's not going up or going down too quickly, which can cause severe um, neurological changes in that cerebral edema. There's also another type of metabolic emergency known as tumor lysis syndrome. And this is what, what actually is happening is that cancer treatments break down cells. You know, they break down good cells and bad cells. And when they release, um, when they break down the cells, all the stuff that's in the cells gets released and leads to these very severe electrolyte imbalances. So the ones that are really common are high uric acid, high phosphate, because you have high phosphate, you have low calcium and then high potassium. So with this, of course, a lot of these are really dangerous, you know, because we give potassium to, for the lethal injection. So we really need to monitor this closely. I need to um, give hydration. That's going to help to dilute those things that are really high. Um, allopurinol, uh, allopurinol to help with that really high uric acid levels. I'm going to monitor and treat these imbalances. So you guys remember the treatment for um, hyperkalemia um, and for um, the high phosphate fates and stuff like that as well. And when I get that phosphate down, my calcium can go back up. Um, and then also monitoring kidney function because, you know, all of these are excreted through the kidneys. And when you have your electrolytes are all off, especially having high potassium, it can affect the kidneys as well. Um, the, another type of emergency known as an infiltrative emergency is cardiac tamponade. And if you remember back to cardiac, your favorite section, you miss it now, don't you? Uh, so uh, it's fluid collecting in the pericardial sac. And so um, effectively, it's going to have the, those hallmark symptoms that Bex triad, the uh, we call it, um, uh, uh, we call it a muffled heart sounds, JVD. Um, hypotension, we're going to have some tachycardia, things like that as well. And so um, be looking for that, you know, remembering those symptoms that, that you remember from cardiac, hopefully you still remember it, uh, you know, that they can have that as well. And so if you remember the treatment for cardiac tamponade, it can, they can get a pericardial window or drain, we can give oxygen therapy, um, hydration, and they may also need vasopressor support for their hypotension. Um, I think this is the last one, but I don't want to get too excited. A carotid artery rupture. Um, this is a type of infiltrative emergency where cancer infiltrates the carotids. And so the carotid artery wall is invaded and literally they can have a blowout of their carotid artery, which means rapid arterial bleeding, or they can have an oozing of it if it's like a slow leak. But either way, you don't want a slow leak from an artery because a slow leak in an artery is still not that slow. Um, so obviously they're going to need IV fluids, blood products, and a surgical repair. And that obviously has to be um, fixed fast before anything um, very serious happens. So yeah, so those are all of your emergencies that can happen. So definitely, um, you know, kind of remembering some of them. So the good thing is a lot of them are stuff that you learned about earlier in the semester. So hopefully you can tie those concepts together to, um, uh, you know, kind of remember some of these things and hope this was helpful. See you for the next one.